All right, welcome to Rock Vegas, everybody. It's Glenn Rockney. Um, I'll have to apologize. I'll be having a beer during this podcast. Um, I feel like that'll go over well with the crowd that listens to this, but I um, thought I'd be fully transparent with you. I'm having a beer. So uh, it's been an interesting bye week for the Raiders. Uh, not exactly what I had planned for uh, when I was doing my last episode, but um, the Raiders kind of got hit with the COVID bug. Um, the, it, you know, hit Tennessee a couple weeks ago, um, Patriots and, and like that, this seems like it's the Raiders turn, right? Like almost that turn ever since Mo Hurst happened, it was kind of a, accumulating. Although I, I would doubt that these new cases are, you know, attributed to Maurice Hurst. Um, it definitely seems like the <laughs> COVID's making its uh, way towards the Raiders. Uh, so just, just, to, if this is the first time you're hearing about this, um, Trent Brown, uh, the Raiders right tackle who uh, has already missed a lot of time this year, but he tested positive for COVID-19. And um, so he's not going to play, right? I think the limit, even if you were to get a couple negative tests after that, like how Nick Saban did for college football, um, you'd still, I think it would be five days. So he still wouldn't be able to play Sunday. So he's out, right? Like he's out. And, um, also, just as a precaution, because the NFL does require contact tracing to be done, Colton Miller, Gabe Jackson, Rodney Hudson, and Denzel Good uh, basically sent home like to, to quarantine, um, and they're going to go through a series of testing. Um, hopefully, they test negative. It's Again, if you're new to it, it does not mean that those five offensive linemen have COVID. It's uh, more so just a preventative thing because the virus could be incubating within them and allowing them to practice could be spreading it further to the other team. That's just the way the NFL looks at it. But I would be hard pressed to think that all of those offensive linemen will test positive. Uh, I just don't think it's, it's been working that way in the NFL. Like, yes, it's, it's contagious. Sure. But it doesn't seem like it's just been taking over the entire team. It's just been a certain couple of guys. Um, but, you know, if another one of those guys were to test positive, which, you know, there's a decent chance of that, I suppose, um, the Raiders would be down two starters on offensive line, and they're already probably going to be without Richie Incognito once again. Um, I don't – doesn't seem like – I think Gruden's going to speak on it later in the week, but it doesn't seem like there's a lot of promising words – given his last press conference on incognito or Brian Edwards. So you don't want to be down, you know, two and essentially three starters on the offensive line, especially against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who they have a very good defense. Um, I'll get to that later, but they have been playing great defense and, and they're especially up front. They have a, just a nasty front four. There's, there's no way around it. Um, also sent home to quarantine was Jonathan Abram. Um, Jonathan Abram, <laughs> I don't know if it was on his Instagram or Trent Brown's Instagram, but they were seen, you know, such shopping, chew shopping together or something like that. And I, one thing I got to say about this is like, look, if you want to hear, you know, big time COVID takes, I have another podcast where we talk about it a lot and it, it's on this YouTube channel. So if you subscribe on YouTube, you can go through there and see that. And it's called Rare Candy. So you can, you can check that out. But what I'll say here is, if if Jonathan Abram tests positive, right, and Trent Brown was, in theory, the person that gave it to him, we really can't be just blaming people. Because, like, you know, saying, oh, it's, it's so-and-so's fault. Oh, Trent, look at Trent Brown. Because Trent Brown has the stigma with the Raiders right now because he's making a lot of money as a right tackle. He's been great when he's played. But people just hate that he's been injured all the time. And now I see people flaming Trent Brown for having COVID. Like, it's like he, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's not in good conditioning in getting that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like oh, man, you spent all this time on Twitter. Now you have COVID. Like, it's this weird concept where it's like, dude, he got it. All right? Like, he got it. It's fine. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure he's going to be just fine. He's going to get through it. Hopefully, it's not too severe of a case. But I, I think him being a younger athlete, and I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be fine. And Jonathan Abram, there's no guarantee that he has this. So, I would ease off of Trent Brown a little bit. I don't think – look, he played great last game, you know, and I don't think he's anticipating playing one every four games. I don't think that's his goal. Um, it really doesn't seem that way. 
even though some people want to do these screenshots of, oh, look at this one celebration where he didn't jump up and down. The man is 377 pounds, man. I don't think he's going to do a lot of jumping up and down, you know? And if he wasn't really a part of the team, then I don't really see him, like, hanging out with all these guys outside of, like, going with Jonathan Abram to go in to get shoes and stuff like that. It doesn't really – if he wasn't really a part of the team – or, you know, a good teammate or anything. I, I don't think he'd be hanging out with guys like that, especially guys like Jonathan Abram, who is, what, the alpha dog team leader on defense? So just a couple thoughts on that. But the Raiders might be in for a, a very interesting roster. Offensive line, you know, I mean, you know, you, hey, if Rodney Hudson tests positive, you get Andre James. Andre James wasn't embarrassing last year, but he's not Rodney Hudson. I'll tell you that much. Denzel Good, right? If Denzel Good's out, then it's you got some John. It's John Simpson time, you know what I mean? And and we saw John Simpson time, uh, not not what we're ready to see. I like him as a prospect, but it's not something we want to see against this Tampa Bay defense. Gabe Jackson, Gabe Jackson goes down, and was it uh, Jordan Davy? I, I man, I don't even. I honestly don't even know who's backing up Gabe Jackson right now, and that's on me. That's bad on me, but. You see what I'm saying? You're getting down to the, you know, bare bones of your offensive line and you don't you don't want that. So let's hope all these guys test, you know, Trent Brown was just an isolated incident. Let's hope Abram and all the offensive linemen are ready to go. Um and let's just hope Trent Brown gets over this quick. You know what I mean? Has a a, a good recovery. It doesn't show, end up showing a lot of symptoms and stuff. Let's just hope it's one of those. He keeps himself isolated. That's all you can ask for. So, excuse me. Ah, cheers. Shout out Stone Brewing. But now let's get to some good news. The good news about all this is that the Raiders signed a guy. Signed a free agent. And it was kind of a free agent that Raider Nation was like, yeah, no, we all want him. There was no argument about it. Like, no, nah, I don't know if he's going to be good for the team. Uh, I don't know about this. Uh, I don't know about that. The Raiders brought in David Irving. It was it was kind of a, a rumor that had legs the minute it came out, because it was like, well, Rod Marinelli, right? He's had his success under Rod Marinelli. They like they like each other. They're, you know, I believe Irving's quoted saying, I only want to play for Rod Marinelli, and if I come back, I really want it to be with Rod Marinelli. Um, and he's here. He's a, he's a Las Vegas Raider. It's great. Um, I, I think that this is going to be only good for the Raiders, because when I say if it doesn't work out, it's it's just like, you know, you just pretend like it never happened. Get rid of the guy, and it's, well, we tried. You know, nobody faults you for trying. It's like when people sign Josh Gordon, right? Josh Gordon gets signed all the time. Everyone's like, oh, could be the year where, you know, Josh Gordon, this could be that. Oh, remember him with Cleveland? Ooh, remember that year? Maybe you get one year out of that. Usually he gets a couple of big plays, and then he gets suspended. And... You know, no team, nobody's like, ah, man, what a dumb team for trying. Wow, Seahawks are dumb for trying that. Patriots are dumb for trying that. It's like, no, nah, you you try it, you know. And David Irving is that kind of talent, I think. Now, you know, Josh Gordon, actually, I, I'm underselling Josh Gordon. He was special. But David Irving is a legit pass rusher. Legit pass rusher. Solid against the run. But I think he's going to be mainly here to play on third down with the Raiders. Maybe play a little bit of inside, you know, maybe get some base looks, but I wouldn't consider him a lock on the base defense. You know, I think the base defense is what it is. I think you're going to see now uh, Mohurst or Malik Collins, Hankins, Crosby, Farrell, and and that's going to be your, your base defense. Um, now, David Irving, I, I think on third down, which is what the Raiders need. The Raiders are going to need to be great on third down, especially in the, uh, in the trenches. They're going to need to be great on third down. Um, last week, Derek Carr, 201 yards on offense on third down. Uh, 201 yards passing were on third down. And the defense needs to be that good on third down as well. Um, and part of that's generating a good pass rush. So I'm never mad when you bring in somebody who, I think he had 11 sacks within uh, like a calendar year with Marinelli, which was great. It wasn't during a season, but it was like a calendar year. And yeah, he he has not played since I think, Really, 2017 was the last time he actually played. I think he had one tackle in, 20, in, in 2019. So, yeah, in 2018 was his last 
Oh no, it's, no, yeah, 2017 was his last full season. 2018, he just had one tackle. Yeah, I, it's I, I, I'm not gonna lie. When he first was rumored, I was looking at him and I was like, oh, I think he just missed last year, but he really missed 2018, damn near. And that's uh, it's a long time. But you look at guys like Alden Smith. I think when you're just a freak athlete like David Irving is, he's a monster. Six seven two ninety, I want to say. Let me uh, make sure I have that right. Six seven two, like he's huge. And he can get after it. Yeah, six seven two ninety out of Iowa State, undrafted. And he he's definitely going to be that guy. And, I, and I'm interested to see if they play him inside or or outside because I think he's he's shown that he can do both. And maybe they want to leave Furl outside if Irving's showing he's good on in, on the inside. Maybe that experiment doesn't have to happen every third down with Cleland Furl because I know that's what Gunther wants him to be. But if he has a David Irving, I'm wondering if that allows him to leave Cleland Furl outside where he's shown he's better, honestly. Especially this year, Cleland Furl stepping his game up. I'm going to continue to give him props. Um, I'm still not blown away by what I've seen, but uh, but I'm there's been an improvement, especially in the pass rush. So David Irving is going to be. I, I, he's not going to play this week. I don't think, uh, I don't think he's going to play uh, this week. I'm, I'm sure he'll be inactive. I'm, I'm sure by the next press conference, Gruden will be like, I'm right, not going to play. You can't expect a guy to take two years off, get signed while a season's underway. And we're not, he might be in shape, but I don't know if he's in like football, football shape, you know, get a few practices under his belt and stuff like that. I think by the Cleveland game, you could expect to see him. I, I would, I would think, which would be nice. It'd be nice. Second half of the year, really. You know, you, you have them. And and uh, it can only mean good things for this defense, in my opinion. And here's another thing. They don't, they don't test for weed anymore. And that was a suspension. They don't test for weed anymore. That'd be like, uh, man, like certain baseball players. If they don't test for steroids anymore. You'd be like, sick. Get them on my team. But you got David Irving. Couldn't stay in the league because people were always saying, oh, he chose weed over football. As somebody who chose weed over sports, don't hate, okay? That's, that's all I'm going to say. But second of all, he can do both now. He can do both. So, you know, we'll see what happens. There's definitely been character con- issues with him I've, I've, from what I've read. I, don't know, I didn't know much about him personally, but just from what I've read. And – Maybe Vegas might not be the best place for him. I'm not, I'm not going to lie, but it's worth the risk. It's worth the risk. So very excited to have him. Don't expect to see him this weekend. So what can we expect to see this weekend? Raiders are hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Sunday night football. Again, let's hope that the offensive line is uh, reasonably healthy in order to show America. Um, you know, they showed America on Monday night football against the Saints week two, but give America an update on the Raiders and let's put out a good showing, right? At least on the offensive line. But the Buccaneers are, are playing good football. Raiders are playing good football too. I expect this to be a good football game. Uh, I know that's groundbreaking analysis and groundbreaking take for me, but I expect a good game. A nice close one too. Um, I think a lot of fans felt good about this game when the Raiders beat the Chiefs. They're like, sure. Tampa played a had kind of an unimpressive win over Chicago. No, I won't say unimpressive. It was kind of uninspiring. It didn't scare you, right? Or I'm sorry, they I'm in a loss. I'm sorry, Tampa didn't look great in that loss. It was a close game, but it, they didn't look great in that loss. Brady forgetting the uh, the uh, that it was fourth down, thinking it was third, and he was you know like, that that was happening. I think the Raiders after they won on Sunday, the Raiders were like, yeah, you know, like we beat the Chiefs. Bring on the Bucks. Let's go. Then I think fans collectively were when, you know, really the, the Buccaneers beat the brakes off the Packers this weekend. I think fans, Raider fans were like, okay, uh, you know, start tugging the shirt collar a little bit like, oh, all right. I think this might get interesting because that defense is legit. It's a legit defense. It's young and it's fast and aggressive. And it's well coached by a guy who likes to play aggressive, fast defense, Todd Bowles. So, the Raiders offense is averaging 30 points a game. They're scoring a lot of points and they're going to be playing against the defenses. You know, the defense gives up a decent amount of points. I'll say that. Although they locked up Aaron Rodgers after Aaron Rodgers first interception, he looked like a different quarterback after that nice celebration dance. I'm okay. And strike two, if he likes key and peel, cause really, you know what I'm saying? You're a key and peel fan, 
But anyways, Aaron Rodgers didn't look good against that defense. Tampa is great on every level. Um, their, uh, their defensive front did lose Vita Vea um, to an knee injury a couple weeks ago. Um, he's out for the season, and he's been phenomenal. I, I remember thinking he was not overrated in the draft, but I kind of thought that he wasn't going to end up being the pass rusher that we thought he would be or that, uh, you know, the Buccaneers thought he would be. I think he was 10th overall pick or something like that. It was 10th or 15th, really, really high. And he, he's he been great this year. And he's their replacement is Raheem Nunez Rochez, who he's a capable player, but he's not even really half the player that Vita Vea has been this year. So it's a big loss for them. Um, didn't come into play against the Packers. And the Packers' run game – just didn't look right. They were in third and long a lot and, and playing from behind a lot. So they didn't get a chance to really establish the run. But I think the Raiders can run on this team. Um, the Raiders run game hasn't been like incredible. I think if you subtracted Devonte Booker's big run, I don't think they ran the ball very well against the chiefs. I think teams are still, still selling out against the run on the Raiders. I, I still think that they're like, ah, we're going to let this number four make the throws he wants to make just not letting 28 beat us or this offensive line beat us. I think the Bucs are still going to do that because I think the Buccaneers trust their corners. I think they trust Jamel Dean. I think they trust Carlton Davis for good reason. They're both very good, very good corners. Carlton Davis is aggressive. Carlton Davis can get, can be beat. Don't, don't get me wrong. He can be beat. He can get over aggressive at times, bite on double moves, which is what I kind of, that's what I'm getting at right now. You hit a couple short passes early and then hit somebody with a double move, maybe Henry Ruggs or something like that, if, if that's who's on, on, if that's what his matchup is. I think there's plays to be made. I think a Henry Ruggs, you know, double move, even Nelson Aguilar double move. You got a lot of speed on this team. Make these guys cheat. Make these guys cheat because if you, I think if you try to just pick them apart underneath, I think they're fast enough to, limit the gains. I think they're a good enough tackling defense. They're a very good tackling defense. Levante David is a monster. Absolute monster. He can cover. I expect him to be getting reps on Darren Waller, uh, tackling Josh Jacobs in the flat, or at least attempting to. Maybe Josh Jacobs makes some miss. You're talking about a, a great tackling linebacker, great coverage linebacker against the running back who makes the most people miss. So that's going to be an, an, an an interesting matchup is the Raiders passing game against them, but I, I do want to see them get the run game going. Um, again, if Vita Vea is not there, you're going to want to, you're going to want to run where Vita Vea isn't right. And that's, you know, at Rakim Nunez Rocha's um, you're, you know, Jason Pierre, Paul, he, he plays the run. Okay. But he's not the, he's never really been like a great run defender. He can still rush the passer. So I really want to see the Raiders, you know, I, I said this against, I want to say it was the Patriots or the Bills preview, I, maybe both, but that Chicago Bears game plan from last year, unless that's been totally sniffed out on tape by other teams, which there's a chance it has. Um, I like running like 13 personnel against this team, at least get some looks where just try to body them up. Use your good blocking tight ends. Witten, Moreau, and Waller can all block. Try to just bully them early. Make them stack the box crowd that line of scrimmage and then take your shot. I think that's the way you got to go out, go about this defense. And, and look, Sha Shaq Barrett guys, a sack master. Like that guy does nothing but sack the quarterback since he's been there. Another underrated player on their defense is Mike Edwards. He he's been a really good cover safety. Um, he's a great tackler and, uh, like, you know, a lot of people were excited they drafted Antoine Winfield, but this guy Mike Edwards can play. He can absolutely play. Dominican Sue's still there. And uh, Sean Murphy Bunting, who hasn't been great this year. I actually liked him coming out of college, but hasn't, hasn't been as good this year. But, yeah, this is going to be a tough matchup. I, I would have to say this is probably the best defense the Raiders have played so far. Um, yeah, it, it has to be. They, they, they're loaded. Now, on offense, this Buccaneers team is pretty uh, 
pretty stacked too. I, I think it's it's an offense that's starting to get hot too. But it starts with Tom Brady. Remember, remember when Tom Brady was like the the Raiders pipe dream quarterback in the offseason? And it's funny because the two takes were either I want Tom Brady, Derek Carr sucks, or Derek Carr is really good and he's better than Tom Brady and Tom Brady's washed up and uh, Tom Brady's not washed up and Derek Carr has been good this year. So, I mean, that it was an argument about nothing. Basically. I think both teams made the right move. I think the Raiders made the right move, keeping Derek Carr uh, during, in this COVID off season. Um, and Tom Brady's playing well. I mean, despite forgetting what down it was against the bears, he's playing well. But just a quick run through their offense. Ali Marpet has been very good since he's come out. Um, pretty much an elite guard, like just one of the top guards in the NFL. Um, uh, they're missing OJ Howard. Uh, but, you know, Rob Gronkowski kind of woke up last week. So we'll see if that Rob Gronkowski thing. I, it's funny. I've been seeing that the Raiders are having trouble against covering the tight ends. And I'm like, I, I think you're kind of just using the last. 10 years against the Raiders for this year because they've actually done a decent job covering tight ends this year. Kelsey got a touchdown and stuff, but they've done a, they've done a pretty good job against tight ends this year. So it's kind of a lazy take to say the Raiders get killed by tight ends still because it just hasn't been the case this year. But they, they have a legit offensive line. Let me tell you, the, Buc the Buccaneers have Donovan Smith, Joe Haig, young Tristan Wirfs. Tristan Wirfs got worked by Khalil Mack. But I think he's going to be a really good, really, really good tackle and uh, for, for the, in the league for years to come. It's a really, really solid offensive line. Um, so the Raiders are going to be tested big time to try to build off that, you know, good performance they had against Patrick Mahomes, getting pressures in the 20s. Oh, what's that like? Crazy. But the Chiefs offensive line is not good this year. The Buccaneers is. So I, the Raiders are going to have to do it against good offensive linemen to start being taken seriously as a defense. And this is a huge test for them. Run game, too. People forget. Raiders, first four weeks, they were not great against the run. Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones are a really good duo. Ronald Jones especially. He's been really, really explosive this year and really physical and making guys miss. And... uh you know, I, I thought he, this would be a nice year for him, but he's been better than I even thought. And, you know, a lot of that is the offensive line. They're, they're allowing him to get to that second level pretty much untouched where he can make a guy miss, which he's always been good at since his USC days. But receivers, you have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, both limited in practice. But if you're limited on Wednesday, there's a decent chance that you're going to play the, uh, Sunday. So I think the Raiders plan to see both of them. Um, big test for Trayvon Mullen. This is going to be other than Stefan Diggs. The uh, Stefan Diggs is probably on these guys' level. He's probably on Evans' level. They're probably about the same uh, production, and you know how scary they are to the other team. And Trayvon Mullen, you, you know the Raiders don't travel their corners, but you know on either side of the field, you're going to be going against Evans or Godwin. So uh, big tests. Those are two great receivers. So. Um, I got asked earlier last or during the bye week, what do you think of Trayvon Mullen as far as becoming one of the top corners of the year of the league? Can that happen this year? Hey, you shut down Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. You can be, you absolutely can be. So this offense is legit. And one thing I will say, I don't expect the Raiders to give up a lot of explosive plays in the passing game. I think they're going to do a good job of keeping the, uh, keeping the ball in front of them and limiting the big plays. I think they're going to let Tom Brady have some of his underneath stuff. They just don't want to get killed over the top. Um, BD Williams did some good charts. I, I think that cover six might work good because uh, cover six has only a 25% first down rate, I believe it was. I don't have the chart in front of me, but I was, I was perusing it this morning uh, as opposed to like cover one, which was like 43 when you have a, you know, a single high safety. And you know sometimes that's Eric Harris. So yeah, you do the math. I don't want to be doing a lot of cover one against this team. So I think they're going to let Tom Brady go underneath because one thing Patrick Mahomes did was Patrick Mahomes was trying to hit a home run every single play and holding on to that ball, scrambling, breaking the pocket, running around, 
trying to play a backyard football against the Raiders and the Raiders did a really nice job in coverage and Patrick Mahomes just would not take the six yard gain the Raiders would give them. Uh, I know a guy who will, and that's Tom Brady. Tom Brady will take that six yard gain every single time. The veteran quarterback, he didn't really want to run around. He's like, no, nah, who's that? Scotty Miller, little hook route in the middle. Sure. There you go. I'll take that. I don't care. So I see, I see Tom Brady taking that stuff, but I also don't see as many like super explosive plays happening. I think the Raiders are, I expect the Raiders to do a pretty nice job of limiting the downfield plays. Now they have to stop the run though. You have to stop the run. Chicago did a nice job against, against them in the run game and, and got them into some pretty tough passing downs and made Brady push it down the field. And now while I don't believe the Raiders have the defensive line that the Bears do, going that going that route against Brady is, is really the only way to beat this team, in my opinion. So what do the Raiders do? You know, well, I, I'm trying to think. The Raiders on offense, right, against against this Bucks defense. Like I said, you got to – I don't really believe in, like, time of possession – being that big of a deal as far as when you're playing you know teams this good especially if the other team's able to score fast I don't think it really matters you know but if the Raiders can run the ball and have nice long sustained drives because that has been their game this year Kansas City was different they were able to explode get some explosive plays quick but I think the Raiders are going to have to have those nice long plays and and really make the Buccaneers crowd the line of scrimmage and get aggressive now Derek Carr owns Todd Bowles so that's very good to know he he's 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 kicked Todd Bowles ass um Marcus Johnson posted a good stat I don't have it in front of me right now but Marcus Johnson posted kind of Derek Carr last couple games against uh Todd Bowles like seven touchdowns zero interceptions um you'll remember the 2017 Jets game was at that game and and Derek Carr was great in that game and they ran all over him too um also I think it was the 2016 Jets game where Crabtree uh bowled over the safety and just ran into the end zone I think Crabtree had a couple touchdowns that game um they've played really well Gino remember uh David Amerson helicoptering Geno Smith on the sideline that was hilarious um so I expect Todd Bowles to not blitz as much because that's what Derek Carr's killed him with. And Derek Carr's very good against the blitz. Um, and I, I think that Todd Bowles is going to try to sit back a little bit on Derek Carr and kind of, you know, I won't say let him check down. Cause I think, I think those corners are still going to get really aggressive and try to, and try to take away the check downs. But I, I think he's going to know that he's not going to want to send anybody extra. So if the Raiders can limit that pressure with four, I think there's place to be made. Darren Waller is going to have a touch, tough matchup. He's going to have, you know, either a safety on him, like, you know, maybe a Mike Edwards or uh, Antoine Winfield Jr. or Levante David covering him. That doesn't mean don't throw to him. Work Darren Waller, work Hunter Renfro, and then let Henry Ruggs be that guy. Look, he doesn't have a lot of, tar a lot of targets, and maybe that's, maybe that's the idea. Maybe, maybe he's there, like I said, to just, just – keep the defense honest. And then every so often you make them pay with one of those big 60 yard receptions or something. And I think that that's going to be there if the Raiders can get their offense going early. So, you know, like I said, I predict a really close, good Sunday night football game. If I was a, neither, not a fan of either of these, these teams, I'd actually be really excited about this game too. You know, whereas Raider fans were really excited about it, but sometimes the other rest of the league doesn't really want to watch us play. But I think this is going to be one of those games where it's like, oh, damn, Raiders, Buccaneers, this is going to be a good Sunday night game. So, yeah, that's, that's all I got this week. Like I said, let's hope these, uh, these COVID tests go in the Raiders' favor and in the players' favor. Let's hope Trent Brown has a quick recovery there and, uh, and th that doesn't get too bad. And um, let's hope the Raiders are as healthy as possible because, again, it was not the bye week that they wanted. Uh, I was just talking about it last week, feel like an idiot, just saying, man, this could be – one of those weeks where the Raiders get back to damn near full strength and it's like, phew, then this hits, right? Can never guarantee that this year, given the, uh, given the pandemic and all that. But I think the Raiders are going to put on a, put a good performance out. You know, I can't, I can't predict a win, but I think it's going to be a close game and, uh, you know, lightweight think they're going to win. Honestly, I do. So 
As always, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Glenn Rockney. This is Rock Vegas, the podcast. It's on the Rare Candy YouTube channel. It's not called Rare Candy. That's another podcast that I have with my good friend, Crypto Psy. Um, and we, we do that uh, once a week as well. There's going to be a couple new episodes coming out. Um, so go ahead and check that out as well. Um, but uh, thanks to everybody who listens to this podcast, Rock Vegas. Um, again, I shout out to everyone who retweets it, comments on the videos, likes, subscribes, leaves reviews. It really helps. So um, if you like it, just let people know. That's all. That's all I ask. Um, this is fun. I'm going to do it no matter who's listening. So uh, thanks again for listening. And uh, yeah, that's it. Go Raiders.